welcome to the worship of God on this Christ the King Sunday at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Claremont, North Carolina. We are pleased to have you with us today. Today is Christ the King. This day marks the end of the church year. In the end, the faithful are those who serve Christ in the pursuit of justice with love, by ministering to and being an advocate for those who are poor, hungry, naked, sick, or estranged. In the spirit of what it means to be faithful, this Sunday we also observe Women of the ELCA Thank Offering Sunday. The theme for this observance is Light the way for justice, light the way for love. The Women of the ELCA was formed in 1987 and follows a tradition that began in the 1800s. In times when it seemed that there was not enough money to carry out the work of the church, the women would act together as a sent or might society. Each woman would set aside offerings at home throughout the year in thanksgiving for blessings received. On occasion, then, the women would come together, as we do today, to join their offerings together to support the ministry of many kinds. We come to worship today in gratitude for all that God has given to us and with hope for all that is to come. All bring thank offerings and also thank offerings for the women of the, of the ELCA in gratitude for what we have received. We begin. We begin our service today with the thanksgiving for baptism. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for this gracious gift of baptism. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin in, in this time, in these waters. Clothe those who are baptized in Christ. We give you thanks that you have claimed daughters and sons who are no longer slaves but are free, who are no longer male or female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O Christ, our King, standard bearer of justice and love, you are the light that illumines and guides our way by your presence with us and by your words. Give us your light always and awaken us to the need of others that we may love and serve you and them as your faithful disciples through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcome. He has done great things. He has done God, you do great things. 
The first lesson is from Micah, the sixth chapter. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? And in what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised when, when Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old, Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading of Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to hurt, who do not lend money at interest, 
and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters, not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order, as it is written, let one who boast, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Life is full of curious dynamics. By this I mean there are things in this life that you both simultaneously may want and don't want. Yes, these experiences create mixed emotions with contradictions and paradoxes that confuse our lives and can make things challenging. Let me give you a few examples. How about when your child graduates from college and applies for a job that is many miles away? Yes, you find yourself both hoping 
he gets the job and afraid that he gets the job and then you won't see him as often as you would like or as you have before. Or you're pleased to see your daughter becoming a responsible young woman but are sad because you don't have a little girl running around your house any longer. Imagine what it's like to be one of the people who's waiting for a heart transplant. On the one hand, you are hoping a heart will become available, and on the other hand, you know that someone is going to have to die so that you can receive a heart. Or how about the fact that Christians have been identified as those waiting expectantly for the second coming of Christ, but actually hope that it doesn't come during their lifetime. Or consider of all the 12 disciples, Peter always seemed to be the one who had the strongest faith. It was he who spoke up when Jesus asked what identity they had seen in him. And Peter very confidently responded, you are the Messiah. And then later, when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter was the one who drew his sword first, ready to defend Jesus to the death. But that same night, Peter is the one who denied Jesus three times. He was one big contradiction. Did he want to stand with Jesus or didn't he? What curious dynamics. Today's gospel text is also full of what seem to be curious dynamics to our ears contradictions and paradoxes to our way of life and our understanding of it. And these contradictions were a part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which we also call the Beatitudes. Consider just a few of them. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all things of evil against you, falsely on my account. What does Jesus mean by blessed in these statements? Some have tried to interchange the word happy with blessed, but that doesn't really seem to make sense when you actually replace it in these sentences. Listen to this. Happy are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Happy are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account? That doesn't make sense. And then if you look at the original Greek, it actually doesn't even say blessed at all. The Beatitudes are actually translated incorrectly in our Bibles. Instead, the original Greek text reads, Oh, the blessedness of... Therefore, our scripture text more accurately reads, O oh, the blessedness of the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. O oh, the blessedness of those who mourn, for they will be comforted. O oh, the blessedness of the meek, for they will inherit the earth. O oh, the blessedness of those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Just to name a few of these statements. Though it might seem like a small change, it actually matters. For as it currently reads, blessed are, for they will be, it makes the blessing sound like it's in the future. Something that will come later for those who are experiencing those states right now. But when we read the statements as written in the original Greek, we find the statements are actually about now. What people are experiencing is difficulties in their current lives and who God is in the midst of these experiences. Jesus is speaking about the kingdom of God on earth now as it is in heaven. And in doing so, he's also speaking about the character of God. Not who God was in the past, but instead about God today and tomorrow. Our God who is now and will be forever and ever. God and Jesus, our Christ and our King, who we have come to know and love and trust. 
Hearing these statements spoken by Jesus might have sounded like a curious dynamics to those who were present that day on that hillside and also to us today. For our culture and our world do not operate in the ways described in the Beatitude statements. Yes, we would like, to, like it to be that way, but we also don't see it really happening that way of life as Jesus was preaching would turn our world completely upside down if it were to come into fruition. It would change how things function and occur in our daily lives. But isn't that exactly what God wants? Isn't that what we pray each time we pray our Lord's Prayer? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Have you ever thought about that? We are praying with these words that God would transform our lives, our community, and our world today. That life as we know it would be turned upside down as God would have it to be on earth so it would be like it is in heaven. Well, 50 years ago, part of our world was turned upside down. Something that had never happened before happened. And it is appropriate that we celebrate and honor the women of the ELCA 50 years ago today on this Thanks Offering Sunday. We are honoring and celebrating the ministry that has been done and is being done by women of our denomination. See, on November 22nd, 50 years ago, the Reverend Elizabeth Platts was ordained as a pastor in our church. She was the very first female ordained into pastoral ministry by the Lutheran Church. Ordained ministry in this church had now been changed. And it was also 40 years ago this year that in North Carolina, the very first woman of color, the Reverend Erlene Miller, was ordained by, as a pastor in the Lutheran Church. And though there was a time in which women were barred from serving as rostered leaders in the Lutheran Church, we know that women have been doing the work of the church since the days of the Old Testament with Ruth and with Rahab. And then in the New Testament with Lydia and Dorcas, to just name a few. It is with the continued ordination of women into rostered ministry and the work of many lay female leaders that God's vision of the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, that the vision of communal wholeness is becoming more fully revealed. That the kingdom is on earth. Yes, men and women now both serving in leadership roles of congregations, synods, and the church-wide organization. Men and women both as leaders and disciples. See, as both were created in the image of God, as stated in Genesis chapter 1, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Yes, both men and women doing God's work in this world. And when Welka, Women of the ELCA, was formed in 1987, one of the commitments made by this organization was to continue the tradition of giving in gratitude for blessings as had been done as early as the 1800s by women. See, when it didn't seem like there was enough money to carry out the work of the church, the women would act together as sent or might societies. Each woman would set aside offerings at home throughout the year in thanksgiving for blessings received. And on occasion, the women would come together, as we are doing on this Sunday, joining their offerings together to support 
many different kinds of ministries. Each year in thousands of congregations, thank offerings are given to support the life-changing ministries of women of the ELCA. The thank offerings given for this day will help those of whom Jesus called and named in those beatitudes, the poor in spirit, the mourning, the meek, the peacemakers, and the persecuted, to name just a few. They'll help transform the lives of others and turn our understanding of the world around. They may also change our perceptions of life through the revealing of curious dynamics. Through it all, the work of the women of the ELCA will continue to bring the kingdom of God to this earth as it is in heaven, closer to a reality as their work has done since its inception. We are blessed at St. Mark's Lutheran Church to have such an active and giving ministry of the Welka in this congregation. May their work continue to bless others. And may God and the kingdom come closer to us in our own ministries and work and our own faith. May we make the kingdom of God a reality on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let us confess in whom we know, love, and trust using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together in the Spirit's embrace, let us pray for the renewal of the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. We pray, holy God, for the unity of the church universal. Draw your people together in to one great company of disciples, together following the example and teachings of Christ our King to carry out his holy mission, together sharing the good news of justice and love wherever we are sent. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. We pray, omnipotent God, for the well-being of creation. We give you thanks for transforming the chaotic waters of creation into the saving waters that nourish and sustain all the earth. Renew us every day by your water and your word. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. We pray, righteous God, for peace and justice in the world. Lead the nations of the world away from the stony wilderness of sin and toward the holy light of love, justice, and peace. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. We pray, compassionate God, for all in need, for those who hunger and thirst for peace, for belonging, for love, for righteousness. Shine your light of justice. We pray for those who suffer threats to their health and for those who mourn. Shine on them the light of your comfort and strength. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. We pray, faithful God, for the renewal of life. Refresh us with your living water and anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Embolden us with your promise and your presence. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. Receive our thanksgiving, eternal God, for all who have died in the faith and who are now with you in the church triumphant. May we know the fullness of the new life that you prepare for us in your kingdom. Christ be our light. Shine in your church gathered today. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your care through Christ our King, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our King, calls us to do justice. May you find strength in God's grace, comfort in Christ's gentleness, and always find joy in God's love and justice. May the Holy Trinity, one God, Bless you now and forever. Amen. To be your presence is our mission, Lord, to show compassion's face and listening.
Rejoice and be glad in the light of God's love. Let us go forth in peace to share the good news. Thanks be to God.